my name is Martin and today what I want to talk to you about is how I use tools like ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot to really accelerate my development. We're going to frame this around Redwood JS. Um, this talk's only about 20 minutes long and so we're not going to have time probably to wire everything up but what we're going to do today is build the core pieces of a you know, fairly substantial application leaning heavily on AI tools to, to move faster and ideate faster. So we're going to really focus on four things. Domain modeling, right? How do we come up with our database models, um, our nouns, our nouns and verbs in our system? Really, really important piece. We're going to talk about building components, right? How do we use tools like ChatGPT and Copilot to quickly build, you know, at least good starting points for, for our application? We're going to talk about using it to refactor. Right? One of the really cool features uh, or things that's very good at is rewriting code quickly. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how we can use that to, to move faster. And then things outside of engineering, right? Uh, a really powerful thing that ChatGPT enables is you can actually now be a pretty good salesperson. You can be a pretty good marketer, even if these aren't skills that you have um, you know, normally. And, and I think this, this enables a lot of people to build uh, really, really good businesses uh, you know, by, by leaning on the leaning on these tools. Like I said, we're not gonna have enough time to go into a ton of depth into any of these areas, but I hope that this really gives you some creative uh, creative ideas on how to leverage these tools. And so what I've done here, uh, just as a starting point, is I've created a brand new React um, React and Redwood and TypeScript app uh, on Redwood 4.5, which just came out today. Um, super exciting to see the the pace that the team is, is uh, moving at. And then I just created the uh, dbauth, uh, you know, SQLite uh, dbauth uh, user put the model in here, and I'm using Mantine UI. But other than that, this is a vanilla, a vanilla project. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to build a, at least the building blocks or the skeleton of a simple to-do application, right? So managing a list of tasks or to-do items. Um, but we're going to lean on AI to do this, right? And so, first, I'm going to switch over to ChatGPT, and let's jump in here. And so, let's just describe the problem. Say, hey, I'm building a to-do application to help users manage their tasks for a day it should support but we're gonna let's come up with a fairly you know we're not just going to do a simple checklist right like to do MVC although I do recommend going through that exercise yourselves as you're learning um, if you haven't already as you're learning frameworks like like Redwood but let's let's say this uh, you know I, I want it to support labels um, simple to do items and we're going to talk about it. We'll, we'll be a little bit vague, actually. Let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Um, I want it to support nesting. Nesting, e.g., they can have a parent and labels in the form of hashtags. Uh, and then, so, so we've described basic requirements for our application here. And what, what I want to get it to do is to come up with some Prisma models. So, right? Prisma models for this. And we'll give it, just as a starting point, our user model looks like this. Our user model now okay, it's moving pretty quickly. One thing I've seen for sure is uh, GPT-4 especially, you know, it's probably the most popular app on the internet right now. Um, it's uh, it can be slow sometimes, but it's actually moving along pretty quickly. So we may have to I may have to edit this a little bit uh, if it's too slow. And so you can see it's got a task. The task has a title and a description. It's got a completed field, a due date. We didn't even ask it for a due date, but it, it inferred that from everything. And it's associated with a user, and it potentially has a parent as its uh, you know as its thing. And then you can also see it has its subtasks and and labels. Do, 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 and it's going to come up with all these with all these models, and this is pretty powerful, right? Like you know, no doubt you could have come up with something like this, but we get a model right away that is looks pretty good to me, right? So let's start here. I'm going to just grab this since we've already got the user model, and you can see it's even explaining how it how it did things. So let's see if that worked. Cool. Prisma seems happy with it. Um, you can see you can see how we've how we've done we've done this okay so now let's say I want to change this a little bit right like rather than let, let's say we want to turn this into some code right so we've, we've got our we've got our 
our database models, one of the things that I want is to be able to have the user type in plain text, right? And so like, I want the user, I want the, and I'm gonna describe this, and essentially you're gonna be able to type some hashtags and these are gonna become, get applied to labels. And so let's say this, I, I want in the description or title, the user should be able to type in any labels they want to apply. For example, record Redwood hashtag Redwood talk and share it. I want a write it function in TypeScript to extract those labels. In this case, Redwood and share. Cool, and it's gonna do regular expressions and Build this. So let's see what it comes up with. And note, you know, re referring to type TypeScript, right? I, w I want it to write TypeScript. You can it can write any, pretty much any programming language. Um, I even have a friend who uses OCaml, and it, he says it does a very good job of writing OCaml. Uh, cool. Pretty simple, right? So we can take we can take this code, and let's take a look and see if it works, right? So I'm going to copy it in here. Let's go in, let's go over into our um, into our source thing, let's let's put this in a lib, and maybe let's call this new file tags.ts. So we're gonna put it here, and let's export it. Because we gotta write like this. And neat. Okay, but how do we test this? Well, oops, I'm sorry. Let's say write some jest tests for extract hashtags. And notice I, I mistyped it, but I mistyped um, extract hashtag, not on purpose, but I, um, you can see that it, it's flexible, right? It picks up on these things. Uh, one of the coolest things though is how it, writes, how it writes these tests. And so you can see it's explaining stuff. Um, it take, you know, you, if you ask it to say, just don't explain, just, just output, the, uh, output the tests. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it gets uh, you know uh, it definitely a thing that I've learned with uh, with ChatGPT is it does get fairly verbose. But that's okay. So while it's doing this, I'm going to switch over. Let's create our let's create our tags .ts. Uh, Let's go here tags.test.ts. Interesting. Like, look at that. It, 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 another non-requirement, but I think this is a reasonable one, right? Where it, where it actually, um, you can see here, it, it kind of added. I didn't ask it to handle only lowercase hashtags, and maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't. I like this feature, but it, a really cool thing about ChatGPT in general is it comes up with um, a good set of use cases. So let's see if this works, and it might not. Uh, you know, like one of the one of the limitations of um, of ChatGPT, of course, is it doesn't always get it, get things right. So, and it didn't know the file's name because I called it something else. Well, let's see what happens if we run these tests. And it worked. Cool. So we've got our extract hashtags function. So you can see, like, with very little work, we've got a very complex, you know, reasonably complex domain model that supports you know labels and 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 all sorts of things like that, and a reasonably um, a reasonably uh, you know, extracting hashtags, right? And, and we haven't had to spend the time writing and debugging this library. So let's jump into here and let's generate some SDLs, right? So I'm gonna say, uh, you know, Redwood G SDL, uh, we're gonna call it user. And of course this is gonna give an error until we get to the, until we create task and label, but that's okay. Uh, task and label on this one should not give an error. Cool, all right. So let's go look at our let's go look at some of our SDLs. Let's go look at task.sdl. And you can see here it, it it's of course mapped our mapped our type to um, it's mapped our type to the uh, to the um, GraphQL schema and we've now got our uh, our GraphQL type. So let's make something that displays this, right? I think this will be a really cool next step would be to 
let's start rendering our tasks, which is which is going to be neat. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I've got the following. I have the following GraphQL schema. And, oops, I've got that. So let's copy you. And then we're going to make a label. We're going to copy the label schema. Uh, and I guess probably not so. Not, the user is not super interesting here, so we don't need to give it the user. And so, what I want to say is create a React TypeScript component using Mantine UI that displays a given list of tasks. Uh, da, 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 da. Each task, each task should have a a um, what do we call it? Each task should have a checkbox, its name, and we call it its, its title and description. And any, um, and we're going to say subtasks should be nested below it. Subtasks should be nested below. Uh, use mock data, don't call a graph. Um, And of course, we could call the API, but I think using some mock data is going to be uh, going to be easier. Cool. And so we're going to, as it does this, it's creating a task list component. So we're going to just generate that yarn redwood gen component task list. And I guess while we're at it, let's also generate a home page, right? Um, Yarn root g page home, and then we're going to call it slash. Just so we have a little playground to, to start to, to put this stuff in. Then as this generates here, pretty cool, right? You can already see it's starting to, you know, it's taking, it's making the left margin equal to the level. It's probably also going to create like a task list, list component, I would, I would suspect. Um, now, one limitation, there you go, right? Um, one limitation, of course, of, of, of uh, ChatGPT is that it's trained on like data from 2011. And so with Redwood, and even with Mantine, uh, these libraries move really, really quickly, right? I think the latest version of Redwood that, that um, ChatGPT knows about is Redwood 0.38 or something, which must seem like a lifetime ago. The, uh, and, and so you often, like this is often a good starting point, but for example, I can already see like these call components, uh, the grid system's changed quite a bit in Mantine. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of refactoring here, but we've got a really good starting point. And so let's jump in here and then we'll refactor this and we'll start to, we'll start to play with it. So we've got this tag list component, tags list, task list, task list.tsx. Let's go boop. Here we got this and we've got our, we've got our stuff and you're gonna see already there's some red. Uh, they now call this the, the um, P instead of padding. Um, and then the other thing that I saw is this column thing's just not gonna work. And so we're gonna just say this, we're gonna get rid of this column and that's okay. This'll, this'll put it in the column anyway. Uh, we can fix our employer tier and we should be good to go, okay. And so we've got that and now it looks like it's coming up with some mock data. And so let's give it a sec here, let's just take this. And you can see it came up with subtasks and things like that. So we're just gonna copy this, this mock data. Let's go to our homepage and let's see how this works. So we can just say, do, 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 do. We'll paste our mock data in here. You know, you could also use Storybook if you want to, but um, I'm being a little, a little fast and loose here for the purposes of this, of this talk. And so what we're gonna, we're gonna give this a task list and it's gonna say we need tasks, right? And we'll give it its mock tasks. Done, and let's see how that looks. So I've gotta, of course, start my dev server. And you, you can see it cut off here, by the way, on, um, on ChatGPT. It's got a limited window and it'll eventually just stop. But look at that, we've got our, we've got our task list. Now, of course, we haven't, we haven't hooked up callbacks or anything like that, so we can't, uh, you know, like we can't click these. Uh, these are controlled components, but how cool is that, right? That looks pretty reasonable. You can imagine adding things to here. We'd have to add some UI for, you know, how do you input a subtask, maybe press tab, but looks pretty good. Um, 
I might even go in and say like, you know, one pro one thing that's actually changed in uh, Mantine is the uh, the way that they do labels on checkboxes. So rather than being the child component, it's gonna just take a label component. And so what we could say is, let's get let's cut this, and we're gonna say label equals. Just give it that component, and now it's gonna look even better. It's maybe, you know, maybe that, or you know, we could even do this. We could say label is anyway. I could go on about this stuff. This stuff's pretty cool, right? Uh, we have we have our we have our component, like a fairly robust one. You know, I wouldn't have thought to do that margin thing. I'm not much of a front end developer. I uh, so that is a a cool starting point. So now let's jump into it. And again, we could hook this up. We could ask it to write some GraphQL queries. We could hook this up to the back end, right? Uh, you know, with an hour long talk, I think we could probably build this whole application in the 20 minutes we have. Let's move on. So, like I said, I set up the authentication. But you know, one thing that I don't love is that let's go to sign up. Is that I used Mantine. This isn't Mantine. Um, I would like this to be to look like Mantine. And so let's go to the login component, or the sign up component rather. We're at. Uh, and let's get it. To, let's let's get it to use Mantine, and say the following. We're going to paste in all that code, and we're going to say rewrite the above code to use React, TypeScript, and Mantine. Right, and you can see we pasted this whole thing in. And of course, it's ChatGPT. They're going to tell you how to install Mantine and React and all that kind of stuff. And we'll give it a sec, and it's creating this page for us. And the really cool thing is, it will, it will need to do a few edits, but like this will get us pretty far. And you know, as you can see here, we should be using the link component from um, from Redwood, not not this this router DOM. But this is getting, a, and you know, use form from Redwood rather than just using React hook form directly. Although I guess either would be fine. Uh, but as you can see, right, this is going to get us pretty. Um, pretty far. And so we'll give this a sec to generate. And some like elevator music or something. If I could beatbox, we could, we could make this more interesting. Um, and to be clear, this is probably not going to work right out of the right out of the box. Like we're going to paste it in, we're going to get some errors. We're going to fix those errors. It's the uh, but it saves it saves a ton of time, and, and you know, and, and on the other side of this as well is like I'm sure that OpenAI is working on like how do we get how do we get more real time data, especially in this world where open source things change so quickly. Uh, you know, even if they updated to Redwood as it looks today, it's gonna you know Redwood of course is gonna be at version 100 in a year or two. I'm sure. No pressure, guys. No pressure. And we're. Do, 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 do. It's creating all. It's creating all these, and so we'll just take a sec. Cool. All right. So we got our code. Let's copy it. Let's just paste it right in. We're gonna save, and we're probably gonna get an error. There we go. Use toasts was not found in Mantine hook. Uh, what did we use before for toasts? Let's see. Uh, oh, interesting. Oh, so so. So you can see here it's using an old version of the um, how Mantine did toast. So we're not going to migrate the toast, so I'm just going to say, I'm, let's just let's just comment this out for now. So we're not we're not going to have nice toasts here, but we are going to um, we are going to create this stuff. So let's get rid of that. Um, we we could of course update this. We're going to get rid of link and we're going to get rid of this use toasts. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's call it. Let's rather than having a main, we're going to just call this a container, which is like. The standard Mantine container. Uh, we're gonna. This is gonna be p instead of padding. Close the container. And get rid of the column, and we're gonna add the import to the router. Cool. So that looks pretty good, right? And then we could figure out how to do the toast. And look at that. Not perfect, but with a minute or so of work, we end up with we end up with this really nice um, Mantine themed. Man Mantine themed um, sign up page. And we could do this with the login page as well, right? Uh, I'm sure that if we change this to, uh, 
do, 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 do. let's maybe call this a line. I think they just have a center object. Center? Yeah, let's see. I wonder if this I wonder if this will fix it. Uh, da, 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 da. And look at that, right? We can, you know, we can iterate on this a little bit, but like this is not a thing that's gonna get you a perfect final output in your first go, but it's gonna let you move really, really quickly. And so to recap what we did here, right, we designed these data models, we built this cool task view, right, that we could again we could edit to make it use real data. And we, of course, um, created our, our new sign-up sign up page that is, is using Mantine UI. The last thing I want to show you is just how I can use this for uh, other stuff, right, outside of, outside of engineering. And so, like, so let's say write a social media post announcing my amazing to-do list application. Talk about features and asking people to sign up. Lots of emojis. Uh, ChatGPT4 loves emojis. And look at that, it even came up with a name. Fantastic to-do list app. Yeah, three out of five, but it's uh, it's pretty pretty neat. And so I find this is really useful. Uh, a way that I use these kind of features, honestly, just for a little bit, like one is they, they're visually appealing and it's, it's fun, but I also use it for motivation, right? Uh, like. A thing that uh, Amazon does this has this idea. They have this idea of uh, of uh, PR FAQs, like write your write your press release first, announce it to the world, get people excited about it, and um, you'll in, in turn find both like validate the need for this, but also like you can find it very motivating, right? And so I find when I'm working on my own side projects, writing fun things like this, uh, not to share, not to post on social media or anything like that, uh, I, I find that can be very very motivating. Other things I've used it for are like describing, um, you know, overcoming challenges. You get some customer support and you can say like, how do I solve this, right? There's a lot of really cool um, ways to essentially just use ChatGPT as a, as a sounding board, as a rubber duck that helps you move really, really quickly. Uh, so it's a tool like any other, right? It has its strengths, it has its weaknesses. You're gonna find things that it does amazingly well. You're gonna find things that it really, really struggles with. And my overall recommendation is, Incorporate this into your development workflow, right? Start to understand this tool. Learn, learn about its capabilities. Uh, learn about how it's going to help you, help you build better software that delights your customers. Once again, I've been Martin. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And thank you for building Redwood and being part of this awesome community. Uh, a lot of the startups that we've launched are building on Redwood. And, you know, as great as the tooling and the technology is, uh, the people are what? what make it make it amazing and so we were so grateful for the core team at Redwood and all the community members that have that have helped and participated so thank you so much and I'll talk to you all later